Tim Marshall, The Age of Walls, How Barriers Between Nations Are Changing Our World, 3, Politics of Place. In this engaging summary of The Age of Walls, How Barriers Between Nations Are Changing Our World, author Tim Marshall documents an increasingly divided planet as countries build walls and establish barriers. In a global atmosphere shifting towards tribalism and isolationism, the book explores how nations like China, the United States, and Israel heavily invest in border fortification. Marshall investigates the impact of these divisions on societies, economies, and the lives of ordinary people. Through these robust examples, the author reveals what lies at the heart of the wall-building trend and the implications it has on the world. Walls Up, Tribalism and the Practice of Wall Building In 1987, Ronald Reagan's speech signaled an era of openness and cooperation, but today the world has a fortress mentality, with 65 nations building walls to keep out perceived enemies or threats. Some walls, like the iconic one between North and South Korea, are quite famous, but others have gone up with little fanfare, like Uzbekistan's barrier with Tajikistan. The wall-building trend is a global one, with governments in Asia, Africa, Europe, the Middle East, and North America engaging in the practice. The book delves into the reasons behind the resurgence of walls and the effects on global society. China's Great Wall and Modern Walls China's Great Wall might be a symbol of the country, but its biggest barriers are economic and cultural. There is a wide gap between the rich urban elite and poor rural masses, threatening the advances made by China's economic progress. The persistence of the hukou system and other changes like an aging population and surplus of college graduates exacerbate the social divisions present in Chinese society. Beijing's answer to this is a new kind of wall, a digital great firewall that blocks out Western news sources and social media, preventing outside influence and internal dissent. In the popular imagination, China is instantly recognizable because of its Great Wall. However, the real walls in the country are not physical but rather cultural and economic. The Chinese government's policies have lifted hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, but these policies have also widened the gap between rich and poor, which threatens to reverse the progress achieved by the country's economic success. Though the rural population in China outnumbers the urban population by around 2 to 1, Beijing spends most on schools and social services in urban areas. Urban-dwelling Chinese citizens earn three times more than their rural counterparts, which exacerbates social inequality. Despite decades of migration to urban areas, there remain stark divisions in Chinese society. One such factor is the hukou system, which categorizes citizens into rural or urban. This system means that even if a rural agricultural worker moves to a big city, they remain registered as a rural citizen, which limits the benefits they can receive access. Meanwhile, a rapidly aging population and a growing number of college graduates that exceed the workforce increases social divisions even further. In response to these issues, Beijing has embraced a new kind of wall in the form of a digital great firewall that blocks Facebook, YouTube, and many foreign news sources. This wall not only prevents problematic ideas from outside the country from influencing Chinese citizens but also prevents internal dissent from organizing themselves and conducting protests against the government. All these walls built within China show that there is a lot of work to do to repair the economic and social structures within the country. The Wall, a Symbolic Promise Donald Trump's campaign promise to build a wall along the Mexican border resonated with certain Americans, but constructing such a barrier faces significant challenges. Roughly two-thirds of the land along the border is privately owned, making compensation inevitable, and the rugged terrain of about 1,000 miles makes it impracticable to construct a physical wall. Despite the Department of Homeland Security estimating the cost of the wall at $21 billion, with some estimates reaching $40 billion, many Trump supporters still see the wall as representing progress toward stronger security at the border. However, the wall also reflects growing angst about the United States changing demographics, as Americans' attitudes towards immigrants have historically been driven by economic concerns. 
While the border wall was already 600 miles long by the time Barack Obama took office, its effect on illegal immigration remains debatable. Similarly, it appears to have little impact on the trafficking of illegal goods across the border. Israel-Palestine Wall, a Temporary or Permanent Barrier The 440-mile barrier between Israel and Palestine is a mix of fence and 26-foot-high concrete bunker, which has been vandalized with graffiti. Israelis support the wall as it has reduced suicide bombings and other attacks. However, this has sparked a question, is the wall a temporary solution or will it become a permanent fixture? The wall highlights the growing diversity of Israel's population, with the Muslim population rising to 17% while the Jewish population has decreased to 75% since the first census in 1948. There are economic gaps amongst the Jewish population, with Herdim suffering higher rates of poverty and unemployment. Israeli Arabs have a poverty rate of 50%. The wall, therefore, both conceals and underscores the challenges of growing diversity within Israel. The Impact of Walls in the Middle East The American invasion of Iraq set forth unintended consequences as it plunged the region into chaos and led to a surge in terror attacks. This has resulted in the creation of barriers, fences, and walls being built in countries such as Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Turkey, and Libya. Although cultural factors play a role in the lack of unity within the Middle East, the physical barriers highlight the deep ethnic, religious, and linguistic divisions. These walls stand as a representation of the region's fragmentation and the missed opportunities for progress. India's Elaborate Border Wall India has constructed a 2,500-mile fence along its border with Bangladesh to keep its citizens out. The fence, which is electrified and barbed in some areas, is protected by Indian guards who use lethal force against intruders. The addition of sensors, thermal imaging technology, and drones seeks to reduce the manpower required to patrol the vast border. Bangladeshi's attempt to cross into India due to harsh conditions, including poverty and low education levels. A rise in sea levels would also claim a fifth of Bangladesh's land, further adding to the problem. The fence has been a topic of controversy, as it has led to the loss of innocent lives, such as that of 15-year-old Falani Katun. Despite this, India continues to prioritize its border security, sacrificing human lives for the sake of national security. Walls and Gulfs in Africa Despite benefiting from globalization, poverty continues to affect Africans, with millions living below the poverty line. Consequently, some African nations build walls to prevent Zimbabweans from migrating to their countries. The walls have created deep gulfs, including economic, political, and social divisions. Even within nations, wealthy Africans are increasingly walling themselves off from their neighbors through gated communities. Although gated communities create a secure environment for the affluent, they also impede the development of a cohesive society. The Walls That Divide Us The construction and subsequent fall of the Berlin Wall highlights the divisiveness that walls and barriers can bring. The economic and cultural disparities between East and West Germany persist even after the wall's removal. Eastern Europeans, including those from Germany, are more susceptible to embracing far-right ideologies. Walls are effective at separating people and reinforce the need for harsher border security. While they may provide a sense of safety, they also lead to the deterioration of community and humanity. The rise of nationalism and illiberalism across Europe is a threat to the concept of a united and liberal democracy. As Tim Marshall's insightful book demonstrates, walls built between nations are a reflection of a world increasingly moving towards division and isolation. Driven by tense diplomatic relationships, economic concerns, and national security fears, these barriers reflect deep-seated social and political divides that limit global collaboration. Walls lead to a retreat into self-enclosed enclaves, reducing community and social cohesion, and exacerbating differences. While walls may, in some cases, prove effective in achieving desired outcomes, they are representative of long-standing issues yet to be resolved. 
In an increasingly complex world, the author prompts us to consider the implications of these barriers on the greater global community and ponder whether walls are only temporary measures or a permanent mark in our history.